Hey skaters, I am Roller Ghoulie and today I am going to be going over some frequently asked questions. We get questions all the time about how skates are supposed to fit. Commonly we get asked, what are brand new skates supposed to feel like? How do I break them in? How are they supposed to fit? I'm going to try to go over all of that as much as I can, but mostly I'm going to be focusing on how to break in brand new skates. There's a fly in here but I'm gonna let it live its life, so try not to get distracted by it. <laughs> now I have two different pairs of almost very brand new skates with me. One of them being the very popular Rainbow Rider. And the other pair is the newly released Barbie skate. So obviously these are two very different pairs of roller skates. This one is vinyl made from synthetic materials and this one is American made with suede. Suede is a natural material, it's cowhide. So it is going to stretch and mold to your foot much easier than a pair of synthetic skates. I'm gonna be using these two as references to everything I'm going over just because there are gonna be major differences in breaking in these two types of skates. I say that these are fairly brand new because I have skated in these a handful of times, the Barbie ones, and I've skated in the Rainbow Rider maybe a couple times. So to me, they're pretty brand new. They're definitely not broken in yet and I'm still going through the break-in process with both of them. Side note, this is unrelated to anything, but I'm pretty sure this couch is haunted. <laughs> it's Victorian, it's very old. Anyway, it collapsed um, all by itself recently and I didn't believe my partner that nobody has been in here or has sat on it because he swears that nobody has, but it somehow collapsed all by itself. And then, so yeah, I'm very scared sitting on it because I feel like it's gonna give out even more any moment. <laughs> and then I came in here the other day and it was soaking wet. It's still wet, so my pants are wet. Yeah, and nobody knows why it's wet, and it makes no sense at all because no one's been in here, it doesn't smell like anything, the wetness, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Anywho. Your Google Home isn't set up yet. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. I hate when they do that. Anyway, maybe Rasputin the skeleton poured water on the couch, I don't know. Anyway, um, so going over sizing a little bit, skate sizes are not gonna be like your shoe size. So definitely do not purchase a pair of skates just straight out buying a pair of skates that's the same size as your shoe because most likely that's gonna be incorrect. Our skates from Moxie typically are more in men's shoe sizing, that's gonna be the most accurate if you're going off of a shoe size. We highly recommend using centimeter measurements to find the best size for you. You can find our measurement guide and our um, size chart on our website that's linked to every skate page. So if you're looking at a Lolly or a Rainbow Rider or a Beach Bunny or a Jack, they're each going to have a size chart listed on the product page. The reason we strongly recommend centimeter <laughs> centimeter measurements is because shoe sizes are all over the board. People are used to wearing shoes that fit loosely and sometimes people are wearing the wrong shoe size their whole life and they don't even know it. And also skates are not meant to fit like a shoe. Skates are meant to fit, fit very snug because you want minimal movement in your skate when you're skating. So that's why we recommend centimeter measurements because it might be off from your shoe size. Just to give you a little bit of an example of what size I skate, I typically wear a seven and a half or an eight in women's shoe or a six in men's shoe sizing. And I wear a six in Moxie's. I wear a six in a Jack, I wear a six in a Lolly, and I wear a six in, in the Rainbow Rider, but I wear a seven in the Beach Bunny. So that's why it's really important to kind of look over the size charts and measure your foot accordingly because you don't want to be wrong on that. But I'm going to explain how brand new skates are supposed to feel so that you don't panic when you try your skates on for the very first time. So like I said, skates are meant to be very snug. When they're brand new, they haven't been broken in yet, they're not molded to your foot, so they're going to feel either stiff or very tight in certain areas and that's perfectly normal. If your toes are not curling, when you put them on, but they're just feeling really snug and the material is kind of encompassing your foot really tightly, that's usually okay and that's what you actually want and, ex and should expect for a brand new skate. I'm gonna go ahead and try on first the Barbie skates and tell you just how they feel right off the bat when I put them on. So like I said, I have skated in these a few times. 
but let's pretend that I have it. And I'm just giving you my very initial impression of these brand new skates. <laughs> So right off the bat, just putting my foot in them before I even lace up, they feel tight, especially in the toe. It feels like they're pressing on the tops of my toes and the front of my toes. But I'm gonna lace them up. Wasn't it creepy that I was talking about the couch is haunted and then the Google Home started listening to me? <laughs> anyway, okay. So I tried on the skate. I laced it up about as tight as I normally would lace my skates. And this is my first impression. So they're definitely snug in the toe area and that's usually where the skates feel tight on me when they're brand new. They feel pretty comfortable everywhere else though. I'm not having any heel slipping. Everything kind of feels pretty snug, but it's the toe that feels the tightest. Like I said, if it's feeling snug or tight, but your toes aren't curling, then most likely it's gonna be the right size for you once they break in. If you ordered a lolly skate, please know that these will stretch about half a size once they fully break in. So do not panic if they feel tight at first. We get emails constantly of people wanting to return or exchange their skates because they think they're too small. But when we explain to them how they're supposed to feel, they realize that they most likely have the right size and they end up not returning the skates. So before you make that mistake, definitely assess how your foot feels in the skate. And you know, like I said, if there's things that aren't you know, curling up and you don't feel like your foot is like cramping in a ball to get the skates to fit, then most likely they're the perfect size. The reason why you want skates to feel very snug like that is because like I said, they will stretch up to sometimes half a size once they're fully broken in, but suede will um, stretch and mold over time because it's just the nature of the material. And you definitely don't want loose skates. If you are having heel slipping, Sorry, my rats are running around. <laughs> if you're having heel slipping, um, if you can w like slide your toes around very easily, even with your um, skates laced up pretty tightly, or if it just feels like there's too much room on the sides or in the toe box, then you might have a skate that's too big for you. There are ways to fill some of those gaps. You can use insoles, you can use extra padding in certain areas. However, if you feel like they're definitely way too big, it's best to get a smaller size because in the long run, it's gonna be better for your feet and better for your skating if you have the correctly sized skate. So now I have bunions. <laughs> I was pretty much born with them, which is very bizarre, but they've gotten much worse from roller skating. Most roller skates are a narrow fit, so it kind of pushes your toes in and does not help with the bunion situation. <laughs> um, but so because I have bunions, I usually have pain on the sides of my feet where the bunions are, and that's usually the biggest pressure point that I have. So I'm going to kind of talk about ways to take care of those specific pressure points in a little bit. All right, now I'm going to try on the Rainbow Rider. Now these, like I said, I really have only skated in them a couple times, so they're not broken in by any means. If you've already, you know, had a pair of skates or especially moxie skates, it could be cool to share your size in the comments so that the other viewers can kind of see like comparisons of what a lot of people's shoe size is or their centimeter measurements and what size moxie skate that they wear and the um, model that they wear because that could definitely help some people. Everyone's feet are shaped differently and some people have different preferences on how they fit. So it's always helpful to kind of hear other perspectives of how skates fit for different people. Anywho, I have the Rainbow Rider on and it's definitely a much different fit than the Lolly. So the Rainbow Rider is a wider fit. The Lolly is a more narrow fit. Also, like I said, this is made from synthetic material, so it's much stiffer. I have way more room in the toe box area than I do on the Lolly. However, it is stiffer along the sides, especially on like those bunion pressure points I was talking about. I can feel that much more on the Rainbow Rider than the Lolly. But it doesn't feel like there's any heel slipping. You know, I can wiggle my toes a little bit, but I can't like shift my feet around too much. I think if I were to go with a smaller size, they would be a little bit too small just because I can feel the pressure on the sides of my feet already. When you're getting vinyl or synthetic skates, you're, you know, sometimes you have to kind of go with the size that fits the best 
more so than the perfect size. So with lollies and jacks, I feel like you can definitely find the perfect size for you. But with vinyl and synthetic skates, there may not be a perfect size. You don't want them to be too small because they're not going to stretch and break into your foot as nicely as a suede or leather skate and you don't want them to be super loose obviously because of the reasons i already explained <laughs> so you just got to find like a happy medium i know that this is probably the best size for me i think if it was a size smaller it would be too painful for the foot issues that i have going on but they definitely could use some breaking in i also want to note just the difference between lacing the two is pretty significant. When I lace up the lolly, I can make it really tight and you can feel the material pulling where I'm pulling the laces. And on the Rainbow Rider, I was pulling really tight and you don't really feel the material stretching as you're tightening the laces because it is a stiffer synthetic material. So they are very different skates. They're for different types of skating. Lollies are more versatile. Rainbow ri Riders are more for cruising around. They're not for the skate park. And they both have their purposes and they both are great skates in my opinion. They just are very different and feel different. Okay, so now that we know how the skates are supposed to fit, how they fit brand new, let's talk about how we can break in the skates a little bit faster. In my opinion, I think the best way to break in skates is just to skate in them. Usually it takes about three weeks of skating for the skates to fully break in and mold to your foot. And then at that time, they should feel like the perfect fit. But there are ways to kind of speed up the process, especially if you're having painful pressure points on certain areas. This fly is on a mission. Um, <laughs> so the first method is using a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball, something like that, um, to stuff in the toe box of your skates. Because typically the area that feels the tightest on our customers is going to be the toe box. So when I say toe box, I mean this area here. So when I'm not skating in the skates or overnight or something, I'm gonna stick a ball in the toe box I'm gonna really shove it in there the best that I can. And if you have a smaller ball that works too, they make these mini tennis balls <laughs> for small dogs, like they're called Kong, I believe. So you can get those at pet stores and sometimes those will fit really nicely in the toe box. So with that ball shoved in there, it's hitting right about here, which is that bunion pressure point I talked about, but that will also help stretch the toe box in general if you're having some tightness in the toe. So you can leave that ball in there as long as you want. If you go out and skate and you come back and you're not gonna skate for a couple days, just leave the ball in there. Or if you just wanna leave it in there overnight and see how that feels for you. But that way the, the material is being constantly stretched and it will help mold the boot to your foot a little bit easier than you know, it's kind of like your foot is acting like the ball <laughs> when you're skating and it's gonna sometimes be painful when you're breaking in brand new skates. So this will help a little bit. Just gonna demonstrate on the lollies. You might have to unlace them a little bit to really get in there. <laughs> okay, you can kind of see where it's sitting. So that's the first option. That's probably the easiest one, requires the least amount of effort and it can just sit in there without you doing anything. Okay, so if that trick didn't help and you need something a little bit more, there is some heat molding techniques. So heat molding is when you heat up the skate and you put your foot in it, lace it up tight, and let the heat stretch the material so that it molds around your foot. So there are two different heat molding techniques. The first one I'm gonna talk about is a using a blow dryer or a heat gun. So what you're gonna do is keeping the blow dryer or heat gun about six to eight inches away from your skate, you're gonna be constantly moving it in circular directions so that you are not just placing heat directly onto one spot because that could actually burn the material. But you're gonna have it constantly moving in circular motions over the general area that you wanna focus on. So this technique is usually for specific tight spots or pressure points. So let's say you had on the right side of your left boot, you had pressure on the big toe bunion area, then you would use this technique on that area for about three to four minutes for a heat gun and six to seven minutes for a blow dryer and making sure that it's not too hot for your foot to go in. Once it's nice and warm, you're gonna put your foot in wearing whatever pair of socks you typically would if you were to go skate in them. And you're gonna put your foot in and lace them up really tight 
and keep them on there. I would say for, you know, as long as you can, if you can even skate around in your house like that for uh, a decent amount of time, that will help. But if you just want to have them on until the skate cools down, that, that will still make a difference. Again, be very careful during this process that you're not just holding heat directly on one spot of a skate because especially with vinyl materials you could actually burn it. So as long as you're constantly moving and you're at the appropriate distance away from the skate itself you should be okay. You could also use a tool such as the blunt end of a hammer or the blunt end of a screwdriver something that's similar to that shape to push on those areas. This is what I have in my house on hand right now. It's a small hammer and it has a handle like this. So what I would do is for these pressure point areas that I'm feeling on the skate, I would heat up the area and instead of putting my foot in it, I would take the blunt end and I would put a lot of pressure on the area that is bothering me and I would hold it there until the skate cools down. Also be very careful when you're doing this because the metal components on the skate, such as the eyelets, could get very hot and you don't want to burn yourself. So before you handle the skates with your bare hands and you're shoving blunt objects in there, just make sure that it's safe to the touch for you to hold the skate and push on it. And like I said, I'll hold pressure in that area until the skate cools down and that will help kind of stretch it out a little bit in that spot. The next heat molding technique is actually using an oven. There are varying opinions on this method, so I'm just giving you a warning and full disclosure that this isn't 100% foolproof. Not everyone agrees that this is okay. Some people believe that you should use a skate-specific oven for heat molding, but you know, not everyone has access to that, and if you really are having trouble breaking your skates and you're desperate, I do find that this is okay. I myself in my skate journey have used this technique on several pairs of my skates and I have had no issues. But just putting it out there, try to do your research and make sure it's okay for your brand and model. For Rydell skates, they usually advise, advise against doing this unless you have a skate specific oven. Moxies are made by Rydell, so that would probably fit under that category, but I myself have done this with Moxie skates and it's been totally fine. A lot of people recommend taking off as many components as you can. So insoles, late rats. They're drinking water. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So it's usually recommended that you take off as many components as possible. So the insoles that are inside the skate, the laces, the wheels, the toe stops. It's okay to leave your plates and your bushings on. Everyone seems to be in agreement about that. I personally have done this by just leaving everything on. Um, I did read some things online of other people agreeing that it's okay to leave all of these components on because usually your oven's not gonna get hot enough to melt anything. But if you wanna be safe, take out as much of the components as you possibly can so you just have the boot and the plate or even just the boot. So first you wanna preheat the oven to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't wanna go over 200 degrees because that could get too hot for the materials. So as long as you're 175 or under, you should be okay. While that's preheating, take off all your components that you can. And when you do put it in the oven, you wanna to try to have them upright, either on a cookie sheet or on the um, oven rack itself, but keeping them upright is usually best because if it's laid on its side, the underside could get too hot and possibly damage the material. So if you can have your skates upright, you might have to move some racks in the oven to give enough height clearance, but that would be best. Checking on them frequently, you can have them in there for about three to six minutes, as long as everything looks okay. Some amount of time within three to six minutes is usually best. Now, when you take them out, Obviously, when you're taking the skates out, use your common oven safety. Use oven mitts. You don't want to burn yourself on anything. Again, keep in mind that the metal components could be very hot. So the eyelets, the metal pieces on your plate, whichever plate you have, and even the toe stop threads could get very hot and burn you. So be very cautious when you're handling your skates. If the material itself feels like it is you know, bearable to put your foot in, you're not going to burn your foot by putting it in the skate and lacing it up, then you wanna put your foot in so while it's still warm, 
and then tighten the skates as tight as you can, wearing socks that you would typically skate in. And again, if you can, either skate around in your house or stand up in them so that it's really stretching and molding around your foot into the areas that it naturally needs to if you were to actually be skating, that would be best. And wear them until the skate cools down or as long as you can. This technique is safe for vinyl and suede or leather skates. Just be very cautious of not laying the skates down on the oven rack or the pan. And also, again, do your research on the specific skate you have and make sure it's okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention, when you're doing the oven method, you wanna do one skate at a time. If there are certain pressure points that are really bothering when you skate even after doing these heat molding techniques, there are different ways to lace skates depending on the issue that you're having. There are a ton of YouTube videos, photos online, little tutorials on different ways to lace your skates for different issues. So I highly recommend looking those up. I'm not gonna do it on my skates because that would be a whole video in itself, but there are definitely lacing techniques out there that people have tried and have had a success with. I did just relace my friend's skates for her bunion issues and she said it was significantly better after she tried lacing them differently. So give that a try if you're having having um, pressure point issues. Lace techniques will also help with heel slipping or high arches and flat feet. Another common concern I hear with brand new skates is for people that have arch issues. Sometimes it can cause some cramping in your foot when you're breaking, trying to break in a brand new pair of skates and the arch of your foot starts cramping or you're having a lot of pain there. I would recommend getting a insole specific to your arch issue. There are insoles made for high arches and low arches and flat arches and normal arches. <laughs> Rydell makes a really great insole that has all these different insert components that you can add or take away depending on the type of foot that you have. There are other brands out there that do make skate specific insoles, but you can also look at insoles that are just made for shoes that have specific arch support that you most likely would need or that you're looking for. So that's one way to kind of take care of the discomfort in your arches if you are experiencing that. And one final note I wanted to throw out there is there is a technique called skate punching. It's similar to what I was going over with the hair dryer and using a blunt object to punch it, but there are actual um, skate specific tools that are designed to do skate punching. And this is usually at roller rinks or other facilities that sell skates. Sometimes they will have these devices or tools needed to do so. So if you want to professionally have them punched or stretched for you for a certain pressure point areas. You should um, reach out to your local roller rinks or other skate shops to see if they offer that because that is also a very good option and it helps support your local roller rink or local skate shop. Another thing to note is that skates aren't necessarily meant to feel super comfortable and just luxurious like, you know, some super comfy, squishy shoes are. <laughs> if you are an ice skater, have any experience with an ice skater, they could tell you that their skates are usually painful and they are very tight and they do that for a reason. It is for better performance, better reaction out of your skates. So if you're wondering why skates for the most part can tend to be a bit uncomfortable, it's because they're designed for performance, not for comfort. There are some skate models that are more comfortable than others, for sure, but if you're looking for something that just feels like a cloud on your feet, then roller skates is probably not the right place to be looking. I don't want you to think that if your skates are super uncomfortable that you just have to accept it and sacrifice you know, any amount of comfort so that you can skate. That's not true. There are definitely skates that are more comfortable than others. If comfort is very important to you and you are looking for something more comfortable, try on different models, try on different brands because you might find something that works better for you. Everyone experiences different pressure points or they have different kind of foot issues. So, you know, not every model of every brand is going to be the right skate for you. So definitely try out different things, but I just wanted to throw it out there that skates aren't designed to be fluffy slippers for your feet. They are a performance tool, you know? So I kind of like to think of roller skates similar to ice skating. They're not, there's different models that are less stiff or more stiff and so they're not all going to feel the same and be the same, but it's not abnormal for skates to be a little bit com uncomfortable or cause a little bit of pain in your feet, especially when they're brand new because there is 
breaking and it has to happen. So anyway, I'm just throwing it out there so that you understand that a little bit of pain or discomfort isn't necessarily abnormal. With the Rainbow Rider and the Lolly, they are different in many ways, like I've said, but the stiff stiffness is probably the biggest difference. There isn't necessarily a right or a wrong when it comes to stiffness, and it just comes down to personal preference. Some people would prefer a stiffer skate because they like the ankle support, um, they like feeling very stable and secure in their skate, so the stiffer the boot is, the more stable and supportive it's going to feel. The softer the boot is, which means the more flexibility it has, and I'll show that here, the lolly is very flexible because it's made from suede. It doesn't have um, added stiffeners in the ankle. But then the Rainbow Rider, I can't do that with. <laughs> so it's much stiffer. So the Rainbow Rider is going to have a lot more ankle support than the Lolly does. And some people prefer the flexibility that the Lolly has. Some people don't like a ton of ankle support. They want to have a lot of movement in their ankles when they're skating or they just like the way that the lolly feels because when it does break in sometimes it can kind of feel like a thick sock <laughs> in certain areas of your foot and some people prefer that so it really is personal preference it just depends on what kind of skating you're doing and what type of feel you're looking for our other models have varying stiffness to them as well the beach bunny is going to be similar in stiffness to the rainbow rider the panther is going to be a little bit in between the beach bunny and the lolly. And the jack is going to be kind of its own breed of skate. It is made very similar to the lolly, but it has added stiffeners throughout. So it has a lot more ankle support. It has extra padding. It has a Sherpa tongue. So it's a bit more comfortable, a bit stiffer and more supportive. And it just feels different. So each model has its own unique feel and its own unique purposes and it really just comes down to personal preference on what you like as far as a skate goes. If you've tried any of these techniques and you want to see how your skate feels afterwards, take your skates out for a spin and see if you feel a difference. If you're, it's still not stretching enough, you can repeat this process or any of these processes. Like I said, the ball technique, you can do as much as you want to and as often as you need to. But really the best way to mold your skates and break them in is to skate in them. I know when I um, first got my Barbie lollies that I was a little bit worried about the size. I I thought to myself, and this actually happens every time, so I should know better, but I actually thought to myself, are these skates too small? Like, are they the wrong size? Are they incorrect? Like, was this a defect? Did I, you know, did my feet grow or something? But I think that almost every time I get brand new skates, so I should know that they're probably the right size. But even in just the couple times I've skated in them, they already feel so much better. And even though the break-in process can be sucky sometimes, it can be very much worth it if you do the whole process of breaking in skates to get the perfect fit. Because eventually they should fit like a glove, especially if they're suede or leather. If they're vinyl, as I have said already, they're not going to stretch and mold as nicely, but they will still break in and fit to your foot over time much nicer than the way they feel when they're brand new. I also have to throw this in there. If you are unsure about the size and you want to try any of these techniques, please be sure that you're keeping everything in mint condition so that they can still be returned. We do not accept skates that have been skated outside or have very obvious signs of wear. So you want to be sure that if you are skating around your house to try to break in your skates, that you are skating on clean floors, you're skating indoors only, you're not doing anything crazy with them. And if you feel like after doing some of these techniques or skating in them a few times in your house and they're not feeling any better and you need to return them, please contact our customer service email. But I wanted to make sure I said that because I don't want anyone to be heat molding their skates in the oven and taking them out to the street and then being like, oh, these still don't fit. I'm just going to return them because unfortunately that's not how that works. So <laughs> you can read all about our return policy on our website under our terms and conditions if it is something that you're worried about. I hope these tips were helpful. Please don't be discouraged if your brand new skates feel a little bit snug. They're meant to be snug. They can break in. Be patient. Try these out and just skate your heart out and they will eventually fit really nicely to your foot. Now that I have done some of these techniques to try to stretch my skates a bit, I'm going to take them out for a spin and see how they feel. Happy skating!